All right, next up we have Darius Wajeta. Hello. Uh, hello, nice to be here with you all. Right. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, I am a 3D generalist uh, from Poland. Uh, I have uh, almost 12 years experience, mostly in uh, TV commercials, uh, motion design, uh, some in uh, game art for indie games. And mostly I was a freelance uh, artist, uh, but uh, sometimes also work in the full-time job in uh, small studios. Awesome. So what are you going to be talking about today? Uh, today I will be talking about uh, two of my entries uh, from uh, Hobby Maldini. Uh, one is uh, Little Castle on the Mountain uh, and second uh, Running River with a flip simulation. Awesome, well, let's jump in. Okay. Okay guys, I will show you a quick breakdown of this simple scene. As you can see, it's nothing special. In dailies, you have a couple of hours at the most to, to make something like that. So, stun is better than perfect. Okay, so this is how it looked in Houdini. As you can see, very, very simple. Uh, tower hovering over the ground and whatnot. But it looked okay from the camera. And this is how is my scene is organized. Uh, we'll start from the ground from the mountain and what I did is create a high field with a simple high field noise and here is very simple just uh, played with amplitude element size a little bit of offset here and there until I had something that will closely work what I had in mind so it's uh, some kind of hill uh, and after that uh, I use a road, high field, almost uh, default values or very little changed. This is very important to not uh, leave your timeline in very, very far because it quite take quite that time, like, I, like you can see, it's quite time to bake. And after that I uh, convert it into a mesh and use file cache. As you can see, this is what I got. Uh, and it was almost what I wanted. So I used edit node to, as you can see, uh, make it more flat here where the castle will be. So it's simple, just, uh, you know, uh, select some points, move it, with soft selection here, uh, so we can make um, soft uh, changes to, to broader area. And here's material and, and out. Okay. So about rocks, it's very, very simple. Like in 50 Houdini tutorials, uh, I use a simple sphere with mountain. And that's pretty much it. Uh, for the um, distribution plane, I use uh, I imported the whole um, mountain, then reduce it to a simpler geometry. It uh, could take some time, so I will uh, stop it. Then I blasted it and uh, cached. So what I had here have here is just something that will be visible from camera. As you can see, this is the camera movement. Uh, and so I uh, selected uh, faces from the camera in the first frame, like so, and then add selection in the last frame and blast that. So I only will have a distribution of uh, plants and rocks uh, where camera will see it. Then I used uh, scatter and align, uh, a very handy little node and probably only used rotation and maybe max radius, something like that. And here copy the points and you have uh, your rocks with different uh, scale material and out. Okay, and here's a little more complicated thing, uh, castle. So also quite simple. First I 
sketched uh, walls from the top where I wanted uh, to have the holes. Uh, then from the um, perspective and camera, I moved uh, a little, little um, higher on the on the ground, resample it and extrude it. This is very important to extrude uh, inwards. So I have this strip of polygons. And here I use a group by range to select every other uh, polygons. As you can see, you can have every third, fourth, and, and so on. And I used this group to poly extrude, uh, as you can see. It is affected only by this group to create this uh, um, top stones on, on the wall. And standard poly extrude to create wall itself. Very important is not to uh, output back, so I have this little gap here, and after reverse um, normals, I could merge uh, both meshes and I have a full wall. Then fuse points, create a simple UV based on the cylinder, and that's pretty much it for, for walls. And a very similar situation for uh, tower. As you can see, I started from the circle, uh, translated in a resample like wall, uh, and poly extruded. All the same, uh, create uh, every other group, extruded that, that and a wall itself, create normals, reverse, merge, fuse. And I have a simple tower. And here I used a resampled uh, curve uh, to uh, create points that will be used to create um, windows in the tower. So here is, uh, based on this resample node, I will create how many point, uh, how many um, windows will be in the tower. So if every point will be uh, another window. And I use a box here, very long box to copy two points on that curve, as you can see. And, uh, and as you can see, if I change the number of points of the curve, it will change the number of windows. And here is simple Boolean operation that will subtract that uh, boxes from uh, tower. And of course, a uh, simple um, UV project, cylindrical shapes, and pretty much that's it. And I have, uh, I have tower here. And here I use transform to create a copy of the um, tower uh, upstream. So and move it to the different position. So I, I, as you can see, uh, there is different towers in different places based on camera. And here I merged every tower and uh, walls together in one place and give one material. And that's pretty much it. A uh, little interesting is a uh, flag. Also quite simple, but Created, I created a um, uh, simple grid, as you can see it's quite dense. And here, uh, volume constraint is almost everything uh, by default. What I really changed is here, uh, pin to points. When you do something like that, and I select some point, uh, in the simulation, uh, this point will be pinned in place and everything else will be moved. And in the, in the solver, volume solver in itself, I only changed uh, wind, uh, 15 units here. And that's pretty much it. And what uh, else I use um, 
100 frames of animation, but uh, simulated, as you can see, uh, 200 and cached 200 frames. That's why uh, here in the uh, after the simulation, after loading from disk, I can use um, retime node and use this 200 frame sequence to uh, use only in the uh, part of it. So here from uh, uh, frame 100 to 200 in this uh, object, and here it's a similar situation, but from the frame uh, 150 to uh, from the sorry uh, frame 50 to 150 and someone for the odd uh, other flag and uh, you know simple tube moved in the place as the pole from the mm, from the flag that's it pretty much and I had uh, three different flags with the same simulation but offset that a little bit and yeah, as you can see it's you can really say it's the same flag. It looks like the wind is uh, affecting the same way because wind is uh, affecting the whole scene, but every flag will look different uh, and you had to simulate only one of them. Okay, and now we we'll go to the tree. Exactly, not only really tree, but branch. Uh, no bread, but uh, bushes. What I what I wanted to do, and I used here um, ZFX Labs tree generator. So I will start with uh, a very simple and low poly um, trunk, as you can see. And only thing I changed is resolution, like it's uh, very coarse and 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 uh, lightweight. Uh, little bit of radius and as you can see it's uh, length and pretty much that's it for the trunk and here is two levels of also very low poly um, branches as you can see also I all change resolution and a little bit uh, here in general uh, section um, like radius and number of branches. It is, here is another, another level of branches, very simple, very, uh, I could say, ugly, but it's good enough for what I wanted to do. And here is a uh, simple tree uh, leaf shape, also from uh, side effects uh, labs. As you can see, very low poly, like drug from game, but with enough of the, and them and uh, far away from camera, it's more than enough. And here the uh, leaf generator that uses branches from the upstream and and a leaf here to distribute the leaf around the branches, as you can see. And it looks pretty nice for all the time I spent on it, so like 15 minutes at max, probably even less so. And here is material, uh, one material of bark from a mega scan uh, to uh, everything and uh, using group from the leaf uh, above uh, to create a very simple, probably just one color material from the all. And here I cached just in case uh, this branch. So it's, it's, you can see it's a little bit different after our um, notification here and that's it for the tree and uh, here is tree distribution uh, very similar to the stones uh, create import uh, the whole um, mountain reduce it a blast and you have only the part that is visible to the camera uh, so yeah this is probably the same uh, same file and here I used simple scatter not uh, uh, this new node scatter as a line this was more than enough for my uh, purpose and 
first I used uh, a box to visualize uh, how this will look and will be very lightweight. And here I create a node attribute randomize. It could be done in different ways in VEX or uh, different nodes, but this will create attribute and um, also randomize um, values between every point. So here I use P scale to, as you can see, change the scale of the bushes and around the uh, all the points and here is uh, orientation so not everyone will uh, face the same direction and the very important orientation is not tree not rotation just orientation so it's four dimensional and here is uh, up vector it doesn't do anything I ask it again. okay and uh, this is quite important uh, I use redshift to render and uh, when I use uh, copy to points uh, and render from this node, it seems that uh, Redshift um, use every geometry translated and it's very heavy on the render. So this is good for uh, previewing and seeing uh, how it look in the scene. But to render, I use uh, attribute of wrangle that uses the dead point and uh, it have very simple uh, little code as at instance equals and this is the uh, name of the tree in our cases it's really the bush so uh, to the, make changes between what is will be rendered and what is displayed if you hold control and click on the, the display flag it will be purple and this will be rendered and this will be displayed in the viewport okay and last thing is a grass patch and what i did here it's also like everything else very very simple uh, i started with line mm, just a couple points then bend it a little bit and use polywire uh, just to create very simple geometry. Very low poly, but uh, with enough of the grass uh, strands, it will add up really, really quickly. And here for distribution of the path, uh, patch, I will use tube. Then I delete everything uh, except top uh, part remesh it so i have uh, more mm, uh, points here and quite even distribution of them move it to the uh, origin and here i created uh, text to attribute create uh, node um, attribute density and uh, add value of zero to every point uh, of this uh, this this plane and here i created a sphere make it smaller and move it as you can see in the middle of the um, patch just it barely touches the uh, geometry itself and here i created also a density attribute but with value of one and here is well magic happens so uh, attribute transfer this one will transfer attribute of value of one from the sphere uh, to everything else and uh, it will be gradually uh, translating from one here to zero on the very edge of the this um, this plane and this blend of uh, width is where you control how much uh, this will occur so this is scatter node that as you can see density attribute is uh, set here and there is more points in the middle and a fewer outside and as you can see when i change uh, blend width it will change how it's behave okay and here is very similar uh, normal okay i didn't need to create attribute randomized to add normal but this is what i did uh, P scale is pretty basic and up vector. 
and copy to points as you can see uh, create all the um, strands of the grass in the one big patch and it's a little bit uh, color randomized to visualize all the all the strands it's quite a quite a bit of them uh, simple material and that's pretty much it, it. and here is almost the same uh, the same setup as from uh, uh, from the bushes uh, so here is I only imported uh, reduced, reduced geometry visible from the camera uh, sculpted it a little bit uh, scatter the point added p scale, uh, p -scale attribute uh, up vector and that's it and here I only use uh, even in the viewport uh, this node uh, that will show basically only points but we render just fine with redshift because when I use uh, this patch of grass and copy to all the points as you can see it, there's a lot of them and it's extremely heavy so it's better to use uh, something like box or something uh, very lightweight to to visualize how it looks and just use this uh, little trick with uh, attribute wrangle uh, to render and that's pretty much it uh, about uh, all other scenes it's just simple dome light with hadori and uh, sun as you can see it's very 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 simple all the curl correction and post-production and whatnot is was done here in the uh, basic uh, redshift uh, controls so I, as you can see it's quite a quite a fast render i have a lot uh, photographic exposure very very simple little bit of gloom and uh, heavy bokeh with uh, peak radius and power because the scale we're seeing is is huge and that's pretty much it thank you for watching